Dos Uno, what's up, New Tech? Really excited about our show today. Um, I'm here in the world-renowned Babe Cave with the one and only Hello. Becky Overbeck. How you doing, Becky? I'm good, Antonio. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I'm doing just great. Listen, you know, I, I feel like I've been living under a rock here in New Tech because uh, three, four podcasts ago, I told my wife, I, I said, you know, I got to find somebody, a, a trainer or something, you know, physical fitness, nutrition, motivator. And she goes, well, check out Becky Overbeck, where you been, right? <laughs> and I check you out and I'm going, wow, what a resume. Uh, what a resume, what a following. Uh, it was just incredible. So I had to reach out to you. I, I'm really happy that I'm here. You know, thank you for having me. And, and you're so well respected out there and followed, but there are many that don't know you, mm -hmm. and I was one of them, right? Uh, could you give a sort of a, a background on Becky and, and how you came to this point in this journey? Mm -hmm. Because I feel it's a long one and an interesting one, and I think uh, a lot of people would like to know. All right, well, first, thank you for having me. I'm honored. Um, yes, it is a long story. Uh, so I'm the youngest of seven children. Uh, we were raised up in New Lisford, Ontario, way up north in Canada. Um, we did not have a lot of money at all. And so we, my mother and father, they did their very best. Um, food was something that, uh, it was a lot of bread and pasta, the, cheap, the cheapest, the, way, the easiest they could stretch out, right, to feed seven children. Um, so at a very young age, we were eating, you know, hot dogs and, and uh, whatever, whatever was cheap. And I remember a specific day where we were all in our living room and we were eating. And I looked around the room and I noticed that every single one of my family members was overweight. And at that very moment, I decided that I did not want that lifestyle for myself. And if there was a way that I could help them, to also get healthier, um, that I wanted to do it. So this was at 12 years of age. And I asked my parents if I could uh, go to the library, get some books, increase my knowledge on health and fitness and uh, healthy eating. And they said, of course. So we would go to secondhand shops in the library and I read every single book I could. So when everyone else in my family was watching television, I had books on the couch, I was with them, and I was underlining and I was circling and writing out recipes, and this is at 12. Uh, and then I asked my parents, would it be okay if I started creating the recipes? Can I try cooking for the family? And they said, of course you can. So then it was finding uh, cheaper versions of the recipe because we couldn't afford chicken breast and we couldn't afford, you know, so my mom would say, you can go to the reduced cart and you can pick out the vegetables and fruit that were there with a certain little budget I had. So I remember <laughs> buying blueberries and raspberries and having to pick out all the moldy ones um, and creating these recipes and my family were loving it. And one summer, um, I asked my mom, I said, could we go for a walk in the evening? Could we just do that? And she said, yes, and my sister-in-law came. And in just a few months, my mom lost 40 pounds and my sister-in-law lost 15 pounds. And my whole entire family was losing weight and they were getting healthier and happier. And that was at 12, 13, 14, 15. This was when, this is when it happened. Wow, that's amazing. And, um, you know, looking at your posting and everything, getting to know you a little bit more, um, I, I mean, it, it's, it's such a, a vast, uh, amazing career path of, of modeling, training, to the babe cave, and passing on that vision that you had at such a young age, mm -hmm. right, yeah. um, to, to the public. And, and, you know, I noticed more and more as I was looking into your, your journey and your posts is that, uh, yeah, I think it's more than that. It's, it's not only the weight loss, it's not only the physical fitness. I think you want to share this journey, your, your motivational posts and your motivational um, discussions online are so caring and so deep. So I have the sense that if someone needs help mm -hmm. and they reach out to you, um, 
that you want to take them through this journey from the beginning to the end, and it doesn't matter who or what you are. Can, can you sort of delve a little bit on this passion that's so vivid yes. uh, in, in your postings? Uh, so again, this, what, this goes back to being a young girl as well. Being in school, um, my friends would pour their heart out to me. I would again be 12, 13 years of age, and I always felt this incredible need to try and help them. Whatever I could do to lessen their burden or in any way that I could. Um, there's a lot of stories there. But anyway, as I got older, I realized everywhere I went, whether it be the grocery store or we were out for a meal or traveling, I felt people's emotions. And we could be sitting here and over here, I can feel somebody's sadness. I can feel somebody's joy. Um, and I feel that it's my responsibility to share a smile or a kind word, or sometimes it's a hug. Um, sometimes we'll be at restaurants and I'll say to my husband, I have to get up for a moment and I will meet a woman in the washroom who I can feel. I saw her walk past and I can feel that she's in need of something. And I'll just give her a tight oh, hug. So mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, so that it amplified even more in group classes. So when we're in yeah. here, we should see what people are going through. I, you know, I can just imagine. I, I've gone through it, and I can't yeah. wait to tell you my <laughs> little journey on it. But um, you know, going back to your, your, you know, your family and and, and nutrition and changing the way you eat and, and lifestyle that way, um, is nutrition an important part of physical fitness and training? I mean, it's one thing to be uh, in your mid twenties and. You know, you're training, and then at the same time, oh, I'm gonna follow that up with a couple of cold ones because I deserve it. Right. Um, you know, I know the importance of it because I've seen it make a difference in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but you, at your level, mm -hmm. um, how do you direct that importance and, and explain to our listeners, um, it's all a complete package. So, you know, you may wanna train, and you may wanna run, and you may wanna do whatever you need to do, yeah. but, the importance of nutrition, and I can see here in the Bay Cave. I mean, you have mm -hmm. shelving here full of, of, of proteins and, and nutritious uh, vitamin supplements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, how important is that, Becky, in, in, yeah. in the complete journey? If you do want to change your life in the sense of training, physical fitness, yeah. and nutrition. So, first of all, I want to thank you for spreading that. Uh, message because it needs to get out more and more how important healthy nutritious eating is um, I liken it to if you were not feeling well and you you slump your shoulders you're not feeling well you're not eating well you're not sleeping how how many positive thoughts can come from you if you're not feeling well your mind won't act well and when your mind doesn't act well, you can't, you can't put all your energy into your life. You need to fuel your body and make it feel good. You need to have good sleeps, more water, good vitamins, supplements. The better you feel, the more, the more your mind will work properly. You'll be able to think more positively. You will end up being more encouraging and motivating to those around you. Healthy eating and nutrition impacts every single area of your life. I think of how many people are battling with obesity, weight gain, um, indigestion, high cholesterol, blood pressure, they're on medicines, and so much of it can be reversed, aging can be reversed through a healthier diet. It's so important, when people come in to exercise, I often ask them what they've eaten today because it's going to directly impact your energy that you put out in the workout. If you're not feeling well, if you've just had a hot dog and a beer right before class, you will not perform as well as someone who has fueled their body properly. Yeah. So it's so, so important. Thank you for, you know, emphasizing that and, and I wish I would have had that, that mindset five years ago uh, and, and, you know, 
if I may intervene in, in my journey and, and that question, and, and I've been mentioning this on my previous podcast, that um, nutrition, especially through this COVID period, right? Build up your immune system. Like, totally. do the best that you can be mm -hmm. to fuel up that machine that we're blessed with, yeah. right? And fight it off, right? Um, so, in the beginning of January, um, you know, two years prior, I started intermittent fasting. My wife's with, uh, she's a uh, nutritionalist coach over at the Mill Pond Family Pharmacy, and it's a keto, it's ideal yeah. protein. Sure. And I saw my wife doing tremendously well um, in, in losing weight and maintaining it. So, I did it differently. I looked into intermittent fasting, sure. right? And I still maintained my naughty food a little bit, right? <laughs> I still maintained my beer, my, yeah. my wine. Mm -hmm. And I dropped from, uh, I was 203, and I dropped down around 180. That's good. Right? It was a good drop. Yeah. Right? But still there was something missing. I, I'm a busy businessman, and I felt, you know, a lot of my time doing due diligence is in the evenings and everything. So in my mid-50s, I, you know, after supper and a glass of wine, I was just, it was over. Yeah, I fell asleep, I was done. Crash, we call that I, crash. Yeah, just crash right out, it was over. Right? Yeah. And so I lost that time, that was very important. Yeah. And, um, and then number two, as I'm aging, mm -hmm. I just found that my cognitive yeah. wasn't as sharp. Sure. And it was bothering me. Your it brain was, helped. Yeah, my brain would just, it was bothering me, yeah. right? So I did the YouTube school. And I made, um, you know, a promise to myself January. I said, okay, I'm going to join a gym. Yeah. Right. But with the gym, I'm going to change my lifestyle and what I eat. Right. Sure. I am going to knock out the um, processed foods. I'm going to knock out sugar. Yeah. And I'm going to cut my alcohol and drink water like water doesn't exist anymore. Like it's your job. Like it's my job to drink water. Exactly. Yeah. And it was hard. Listen, Eric, Becky, you know more yeah. than anyone. Mm -hmm. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Good point. Everything is hard, right? And you have to work at it, right? So I began working at it, and with my wife's software app system, mm -hmm. I followed and weighed myself, and I was able to see my body fat, my BMI, my water intake, and I, also, and I started to macro count my foods, right? I wanted to stay in you know, about a 40% protein, 30 carb, 30 fat, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, split. And I watched what I ate, right? And I maintained my BMI calorie intake. However, with the exercise, I was in a calorie deficit. Yeah, good. And I said, okay, this is kind of cool. So I was tracking it, right? Yeah. And you, you'll probably emphasize on that. It's so important to track it. Because if you don't track it, you'll get lost, right, Becky? Like, so I was tracking it, and it pushed me to maintain that calorie deficit. And it pushed me to say, oh, I'm short of my proteins, right? Let's bring them up with a workout regime. And what I noticed over six months, so I started at 180 in January. I'm now down to 159. Amazing. Yeah, my body fat percentage is 20.4. Right? How are you feeling? I feel the best Becky that I've ever felt. Like I would have to say that in my 20s and 30s, I have not felt this way, right? And it's not that I didn't feel bad before, it's just, I, I just knew that there was something not right and I just felt that it's time to change and it's time to be the best that I can be. And I turned 60 this year, so I challenged myself. I said, okay, oh, I'm an old man at 60. I'm not really an old man, but I said, okay, I'm going to uh, challenge myself. And the fact that I stayed on the wagon mm -hmm. is because the, of the way I felt. I know. That was the weird part. It's you like I, I thought I was going to fall off the wagon and say, oh, I'm looking at that cold Coors Light. Yeah. And I look. But I did, in fact, like I didn't have a drop of alcohol or a beer in three months in that, in that first period. My birthday was in March, and that's when I toasted myself, right? Yeah. And I had a glass of wine, but now the glass of wine, now that cold beer, mm -hmm. is every week or 10 days, and it's not part of my lifestyle anymore. Yeah. But I enjoy it sure. as a once in a while, right? 
and I've maintained it. So that's what I'm really proud of is, is that I've stayed there. And it was a little difficult in COVID, right? But I was able to get a, uh, a pedal belt. There, there, weren't, there, weren't, there weren't many out there. Yeah. I think I grabbed the last that's one. Right? And with kettlebell and body weight exercises, right? Mm -hmm. I maintained it. And as everybody knows, back in the gym uh, as of last week at Good Life. Yeah. And uh, again, you. this is why I'm so honored to have you on the show. So that's a little bit of my fitness journey. So I'm telling you out there, if Becky's telling you this, I'm telling you this. Anybody can do it. Change your life at any time you want. There's no feeling like when you become how you feel right now. There's no, once you get there, you never want to go back. And the other part is you want to scream it from the rooftops because you want to help as many people as possible yeah. to feel how good you feel, right? Yeah, yeah. That's what the whole thing is about being a fitness coach is you know how good it feels to be healthy and strong. And you just want to help as many people as possible to get there. Yeah, absolutely. When, you know, at, at your level, Becky, and what you've accomplished, um, your babe cave classes, your kangaroo, is it kangaroo? Kangaroo. Kangaroo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kangaroo. Um, I've seen them. They're, they're very inspirational. And, and mm -hmm. you have, you know, a mix of, 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 of many people in age groups mm -hmm. in your class. You know, you're at your level, at your peak. And to stay at your peak, I know you must have a crazy workout regime. When someone comes to you as a beginner, mm -hmm. like, you know, as a beginner seeing you, maybe they're intimidated, maybe they're not, not. you know? Um, how do you bring them in with your love and your coaching and do the workout that you do, mm -hmm. however, let them gradually get to where they're supposed to go. Yes. Um, so as you mentioned, we have uh, all ages, sizes, and fitness levels in the studio. So we've uh, I've had the, the, the great honor of training with little ones as young as five and six, up into men and women in their 70s. And we're all in the same room together. It's not like, you know, now it's gonna be the the man class and the woman class and whatever, age group class. No, we're all together. And as you can see on our, um, our rack, we have weights that start at two pounds and they go up to 40 pounds. Um, so everybody comes in. Before COVID, everybody hugged each other. So we were all excited to see each other. You become a family, um, catch up with each other, and you spend a lot of time together. So anyways, tight hugs are a big part of it. Um, Warming, warm welcome is really important to me. Then everybody chooses their own weight. So it's not something that okay. I say, you have to use this and you have to use that. So you come in, if you're a beginner, you might start with two pounds. You might start with five pounds or eight pounds. I started, you know, back in the day, I, I my first set was an eight pound set of dumbbells in my bathroom. And uh, I worked my way up, but anyways, the beginner might do jumping jacks, whereas the more advanced person in the room might be doing burpees. Uh, everybody works at their own pace and there are modifications for every single exercise. If someone has a bad shoulder, they might use a dumbbell in this arm, but this one is just going to be doing the repetition right. with no weight in that arm. So the main thing I try to get out in every single class is that there is no competition. Life is not a competition. It's only about you versus you. And if you've been using eight pounds or 10 pounds for the last year, I'm going to be that person who's gonna encourage you to increase your weight. I probably am going to see your potential before you see it. So I will be the person who's going to say, have you tried recently to up your weight? Have you tried a burpee recently? You've been coming for six months and you're still doing jumping jacks. I think you're ready to do a burpee. Um, most people will try it. And they surprise themselves at what they can do. All of a sudden they go, oh my gosh, I didn't even know I could do that. Yeah. Until they try it. So that's what it's about. The, and, and I'm going to ask you, um, the cardio side, mm -hmm. all right, like, you know, pump and weight, yep. you know, that image of, oh, I'm just going to do my, I love it. my squats, I'm going to do the bench press. Right? Yeah. Um, but how important is the cardio side? I, I, in, me for my age, 
Um, you know, I, I, look, I look at the cardio side like, and what I mostly do is walking. My wife yeah. and I walk four to five great. You know, kilometers a night. Good. That's what we were doing all through COVID. I may do the bike mm -hmm. for an hour yeah. at level eight. Good. I don't kill myself on it, right? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I, I measure my, I, I say like, okay, my body's like an old Ferrari. <laughs> You know, you just want to go in the garage and just turn it on every once in a while and let yeah. the motor run. Okay. You know, just <laughs> just a little bit and then shut her down. Okay. All right. Uh -huh. um, but I, you know, I know and understand that cardio at a higher level mm -hmm. may. Let's say this, Becky. If I want to get 18%, I'm going to yeah. ask you. If I want to get to 18% body fat, yeah. that's my goal. Uh -huh. I, because I have a feeling that I'm going to be at 20% for a long time unless I crank it up. Tell okay. me tell me that relationship of cardio or can I just maintain at my pace right now, continue the calorie deficit, top up my protein and, and go? Or how okay. important is that cardio thing? Right, so if you want more, if you're the person who just wants to maintain where you're at, continue doing what you're doing. If you come in here and you say to me, I want to lose 10 pounds, I want to see my delts, I want to see my six pack, cardio will be essential. Uh, the best thing you can do are HIIT workouts. So we will use the watches that uh, they will track your calorie burn. So your Apple Watch or your Fitbits, things like this. Okay, so for a typical strength training class, mm -hmm. you might burn, so I'm not talking intense, I'm talking 20 pound, 25 pound dumbbells for an hour. Um, shoulders, triceps, biceps, all of it. I will maybe burn 300 to 400 yeah. calories at most. Yeah. I'm like working. Uh, I don't think breaks. So this is like the max. Now, if I were to do a HIIT workout, so HIIT will be something like, let's say we're gonna do 10 bicep curls and then we're gonna do 10 burpees. And we're gonna do that five times. And then we're gonna do skipping, fast, 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 get your heart rate right up. And then you're gonna do some shoulder press, whatever it is. Um, that is going to increase your heart rate. It's going to increase your calorie burn. That class will get us closer to 600 calories. Okay? In a combination of pumping. Right, so you do a little bit of strength and that cardio back to back, that's the highest calorie burn you can do. Rather than steady state cardio, so can you, people will say, can you dance burns all a thousand calories? It doesn't. It's steady state cardio, we do nonstop for an hour, and again, we might hit 400 calories. When you do the can you do? Yes. And now, it's all dependent on your, your size of your body and how accustomed you are to fitness, etc. There's, there's, you know, um, variables. But for me, I know we've tested it on many people in yeah. the gym. Hit is the highest calorie burn. When you're burning more calories, paired with your calorie deficit of your eating, so if you take that down a bit, and you increase your calorie burn in your class, or your workout, you will lose more fat. So more calorie burn equals more fat loss. Um, so try and implement a few HIIT workouts a week. And that's that's what you're saying, in, in my regard, would be the extra push I need yep. to get that 2%, yes. right? So you wanna get your heart rate up. And then I have, so over there, you can see half of them with those books that are all lined up. Yep. Um, so I have about 5,000 more of them, and they're all handwritten workouts, so I stay up till 2, 3 in the morning writing out workouts, as I did when I was 12 with recipes. Now I have my oldest daughter does yeah. that part. But they're all handwritten notes. We post them for free. So I would be happy to send you some that you could try at your home with your kettlebell. There are ones without weight that you could just do body weight yeah. uh, and cardio, but those are the real life. That's a good one. You know what, I, I, it just reminds me of what I've read up on too, and again, the YouTube school, right? Mm -hmm. um, fast cardio. Like fast, fasted? Fasting cardio, mm -hmm. where, um, and for those that don't know, yeah. I feel honored that I know. Um, uh, you wake up in the morning, no no food, no nothing. Mm -hmm. No water, no, no, it's, you, well maybe water. I'm it's sorry. dependent, some No people, coffee. So, no. Some people, it depends what you believe, and I would never want to change what you believe. Um, so for us, we do it fasting. So in the morning, all my workouts are fasted, but I have black coffee, water, and my supplements. So it's no food, but I also, my coffee's black. So I do. Okay, good. Yeah. So as far as I know, in my world, 
Co black coffee, water, and your vitamins are okay. And the fasting cardio mm -hmm. over the HIT mm -hmm. that you were explaining, what, what is sort of your comparable on what would be more effective? Right. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say one is better than the other. I would put them together. So I would still do your fasting workout. And do the HIT? And do HIT. Wow. Every morning we do it. And it's all about your mindset. So if you think I could never do that, you're probably right. You'll create that for yourself. Yeah. But if you say, hey, I'll give it a try, you might be surprised at what you can do. Absolutely. May I ask you, like, yes. when you're at the top of your game, when I've seen your posting of mm -hmm. competition and, yeah. and modeling and, you know, your six pack and the definition that you're showing, when you're at the top of the game, what's your body fat percentage? Uh, well, I have been as low as seven, eight percent. Wow. Yeah, very wow. low. Yeah. Um, I love being lean. It's my favorite. I, I maintain all year round. My six pack is available all year round. I feel best this way. And some people say, I've had a lot of people say, you cannot be healthy and stay at that weight. Um, I, I don't have, agree. I have more energy in my little body than I know what to do with. I sleep amazing, I feel great, I eat healthy, I listen to my body, and it says, girl, like, yeah. work. So what do you maintain as, it, it, when you're down into that sort of competition body, yeah. at your seven, eight, you maintain, what, yeah. about 10 right now? Or? Yeah, maybe like 11, 12, somewhere in there. So I also enjoy red wine. So if I say, so my eating is clean all year round. Yes. I don't include, I don't include junk food, I don't do fast food. So all year round, my diet is super clean, but I do enjoy red wine. Mm -hmm. When I am about to uh, do a photo shoot, probably next month, or something like we're getting ready for Olympia or Arnold Classic, I'll cut the wine. That's pretty much all I have to do. Yeah. And it might be a month or two without red wine, and all of a sudden, any little layer of fat that's there is gone. It's gone. Um, again, another point that I'm saying when you brought up the no alcohol when you're in your top level training, when I read up, and one of the reasons I, I wanted to get more depth, me, I wanted to get more definition, yeah. right? So obviously I knew I had to lose the body fat, and I didn't want to lose muscle. No. So I, 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 I maintained the muscle workout mm -hmm. with the high protein, mm -hmm. fat, right? On the macros. Um, but I read, if your intention is to try to define and bulk up a little bit mm -hmm. as you're losing fat, which is hard to do, right? It's those opposites kind of It takes, more time. Body, it takes, it takes more, more time. You can do it, yeah. but it takes more time. They said alcohol is a no-no. No. Because it defeats the purpose of regenerating your muscles. Yeah. And right, am I right, Becky? Yeah. Maybe, maybe understand to those that are, are you know, taking the effort that are training yeah. so hard yeah. that still say, oh, I wow, love that cold beer after a workout. It's also super easy for people to drink. And so you might be watching very closely to what you're eating and putting in your body that way. But calories and beverages are insane. Yeah. Um, and it's very easy to have three, four, five, whatever beverages, glasses of wine, champagne, uh, whatever you're drinking, coolers, beer. And there is no possibility you can stay in a calorie deficit. When you're drinking. No, no, it's really, uh, no. Or, or you're starving. Or, or, right, or you're but gonna, even so, you almost can't. Or you're gonna get drunk very yeah. fast. <laughs> um, so there's that, and also people have said, the more they are drinking, the easier it is to just start snacking on whatever food's yeah. in front of you. Your inhibitions are lowered, and you are just, you forget about what's important to you, so you just eat yeah. the cheese, and the crackers, and the salami, the olives, and yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I find too, I have more control now. I mean, the, the mindset is there, yeah. and even if it's at the table, I don't indulge, mm -hmm. and where I would just demolish it, right? Yeah. Um, so that part I'm very happy for, and it just makes you feel better at the end of the day that, you know, you, you take the time to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we work so hard probably in different aspects of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what I've really realized is that you know, if you don't take the time to take care of yourself, nothing else will fit. You know, I, I want to be, I wanted to be, not that I'm not a good husband, I wanted to be a better husband. Exactly. You yeah. know, not that I'm a bad father, I wanted to be a better father. So because my work schedule was, hey, 
12 hours a day, 14 hours a day work, I can do that, no problem. And I would do it because when work was calling, I was accountable, I was there. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't do, Becky, is I didn't take that time for me. Yeah, right. Which was the physical fitness, the yeah. taking time to go out and get groceries of good food. So true. You know, meal prep. And meal prep and getting things ready. Mm -hmm. And it changed, right? So that's why you're such an inspiration to me because I now understand what you had to go through to get at the level that you are. Yeah. Right? In every, every area. Yeah, and, and here you are in New Tech, mm -hmm. right? Great. Um, I wanted to bring up the news that everybody has COVID. Yeah. You know, we all have a story with COVID, right? Um, but I now that I've seen the Dave Cave and your environment here, um, I almost think that this is almost a blessing, of, you know, of, of what came out of COVID. So. Really interesting how something so globally negative enhances other areas of our lives and, and journeys, right? So you've got this amazing studio here, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in such a beautiful setting. COVID hits, how did that kind of change your life? Changed everybody's life, but I just wanna hear sort of your story. Mm -hmm. Here you are, you know, in, in, the, in the fitness business, maybe you were more outside, now I, see that it's all inside right so yes. how did everything work out for you in COVID? <laughs> this is quite the question i'm gonna get through it so for seven years since we're in the babe cave uh we never once canceled a class so ever 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 i homeschooled our three daughters and they would be home and i would just say one morning i'd be nauseous or not feeling well or they were not well and the class still ran we always just did it so <sighs> Um, it was hard when they first said you have to close your studio. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the first time I've ever had to cancel. Devastating. Yeah. So we, we said to everybody, remember the night, it was like everybody was here. And we said, well, guys, I think this is it. Like, we got to close up. And so we did. And the next morning, it was like your whole life had been ripped out from under you because our life was coming out here to train. It was our kids' life. And... So I said, I'm going to do a live video. I'm going to do a workout live. That was your that, that was morning. <laughs> the very next morning, I said, well, I'm going to go live. And if, if two people want to join or if anyone wants to work out with us, let's do that. So that first day, we had nine people join us. And um, it went from nine. And we just kept doing it. So then we did it twice a day. Now, the thing that a lot of people don't know is we have very awful Wi-Fi here in our area, mm -hmm. our forest. So we were turning on our cellular data and we were using our data, which was costing us $15 per class to run. We didn't say anything. And then, uh, so we were doing three a day at that time and we were running out of our data and we were topping up our data with hundreds of dollars just so we could provide free workouts for people. Because it was important. I was training with all these people. You can't just leave them now. Yeah. You can't just hope that they're gonna do it on their own. So we kept going and, um, that was March and then April and the classes began to get 20 people, 40 people, 60 people, 100 people and then it was 500, 800, 1,000 wow. and mid-May wow. mid we hit 2,500 people training with us and it was incredible and we started interacting with people from Australia to Saudi Arabia to um, all over the United States, Alaska and people were pouring their hearts out saying how much they were appreciating these workouts. Please don't stop. If COVID stops, please don't stop. I've lost 15 pounds. I've lost 20 pounds training with you. Uh, so many people, it was like, I'd stay up at night. We'd be sitting around the couch as a family and I'm reading these stories to the girls of Jay and we were like almost in tears. You know, it's so heartfelt. Wow, wow. But there's something else I have to say that I haven't spoken about yet. Three days into self-isolation, I got a call from my mom, and she was diagnosed with breast cancer, stage three. And she, uh, she had to go to all her appointments on her own. I couldn't come. She's eight years old, 
And the reason I'm talking about it is because so many people are going through so much and they use that as an excuse to not take care of themselves and to not work out. One morning I came up to train to do a live class and I couldn't even speak without crying. Nobody knew it. So I faced the mirror and my oldest daughter who's 17, she knew and she just took over. And uh, I was like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to continue teaching? When I think about it, my mom. And then I realized you can take that pain and you can turn it into power. And all of a sudden, you stand with your shoulders back and you do it for your mom. Because you remember whose daughter you are. And you adjust your crown. And so I did. So her picture is up at the front. And every class is for her now. But the good news is the chemo is helping and the tumor is shrinking. And she's you know, doing the best she can. So a lot of people don't even know that. They watch and they do the classes and they think life is perfect. You know, and you just, oh, you don't have the problems we do. Trust me, we all have problems, but it's how you react to it. So you take your pain, whatever you're going through, financial, health-wise, whatever it is, and you turn that pain into power, and you use it to become stronger and healthier. And that way you're better able to take care of the people you love. That's a, that, that's a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that with uh, everyone, Becky. It's just another example of who you are. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very deep. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, we're getting towards the end of the podcast, and I, and I wanted to bring up the kangoo, kang, kangoo sessions and those. And uh, I, I almost want to try one of those you things. You should. I, yeah, I will. One day I will. But You want to get that cardio in. Yeah, I want to get that cardio in. But it looks so fun. It, it, it is. You know, uh, these ski boots with bumpers on them, and you're hopping around, you got great music going, and everybody's... And I, how, do you, how do you get everybody on the same dance moves? Like, do you train them? What do you do? Like, how, how, what, how do you get it? Everybody's in sync and they're, you're kicking your legs and yeah. your arms and it's so, like a chorus. You know? So Antonio, how do you get better at anything in life? Practice, 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 yeah. work hard, yeah. But it comes down to your mindset of wanting to learn, right? So yeah. if you come in here with the attitude of I can't do it, yeah. again, you're not gonna be able to do it. But if you come in here saying, I am going to get this, I'm going to learn this, um, then you will at any age. We've had men and women, like I said, up to 70, in their 70s. No! Yes! Really? Oh, man. So many. And from all around the world also that have purchased boots uh, over COVID time because they couldn't go to their gyms and they're out for a run and they're following our videos. Yes. So the cool thing about kangaroo jumps, number one reason that people love them is because they reduce the impact from your joints. So if you're someone who has had joint problems, if you've had arthritis or knee pain or your lower back or your hips, um, if you've had any kind of issues, they were designed for rehabilitation. So they take 80% of the impact off of your joint. Okay, so somebody who has arthritis and they say, I wish I could run like I used to, you can. I run in these, I prefer them for running because I'm almost 40. My mom and dad have both had knee replacements, hip replacements, and it's in our genes, um, in our joints. So I love running in these as opposed to running shoes because I have zero joint pain. My hips don't hurt, my knees don't hurt. So I'm training in these two to three hours a day with zero joint pain. Wow, so that, that, and what a, so technically, I'm, Jim and I go on the treadmill, mm -hmm. just take the treadmill out of it, yeah. take that pounding out right. of it, and this is the cushion right. uh, of support. Right, so the spring. Uh, and then, because they're a little bit heavier, they are bur they're going to help you burn 25% more calories. So picture every time you do uh, a leg lift or a crunch or any kind of standing jumping jacks, you now have the weight on your yeah. feet. So you're building that strong core. 
Also, you're improving your balance because naturally the boots want to wobble. Mm -hmm. So um, you have to improve your core, your strength, your uh, all of it, lower back. A lot of people come in and they hold on to the wall at the beginning. They put them on, they're like, oh my goodness. Uh -huh. But by the end of that first class, they're already, they got they've got it. And the more classes they attend, the better they get. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I imagine it would be fun because when yeah. you, the way it's choreographed, mm -hmm. I'm sure you, you know, you're, you're, you're burning calories and having fun listening to music and trying to groove all yeah. your dance steps together like you're in a it's, Broadway show. Yeah. It's just amazing. But it's so much about your mind again. And yeah. like you were saying, improving that mental health, it's not just like you're on a treadmill and you're bored. You, you have to keep up and go, oh yeah, it's, it's where Jack's next. Like I'm going to yell at the move. But you're already preparing in your mind. I know this song and it has 16 jumping jacks and you know, you're already there. So you're preparing it and your mind is in. If you start thinking of other things, if you start thinking of the problems in your life, you won't be able to keep up. Yeah. You have to take your mind and turn off all the stuff back here and turn it on. And for one hour, your focus is here, mm -hmm. which taking, I love. Taking care of yourself. Yes. Right? And you have fun, so you get the energy of those around you, so they're smiling and beaming, and your favorite song might come on. Yeah. You know, like, We Will Rock You. We will Yeah, I know. Rock you get just so motivated. Yeah. And that song comes on, and you feel, you hear the like, 50 people. Oh my, like, oh my God. You get, I get goosebumps up and down my arms, right through my legs, all over, and you can see other people. They're all this way. They're all into it. Oh, yeah. And, and Becky, for those that don't know, like, if, if someone wanted to, uh, Join a class, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, is there like a membership for here, or how, did, how does it work? Someone uh -huh. wants to. I'm interested. I want to give it a try. Yes. Um, how is your setup right. for, for those that would love to test it, try yeah. it? So right now with COVID, it's a bit different. We have to do sign up. You'll see there's X's on the floor to keep uh, social distancing. Up until this year, we have never had sign up. So as many people that wanted to come, we made room. We have expanded the Babe Cave three times. Um, that is a crazy story. Some people know, some people don't. Before the gym started, before I started the Babe Cave, Jay and I went and we saved every penny we could. We had three little babies, we were in our 20s, and we saved and scrimped and saved. And then we had planned to sell our homes. We put our home up for sale and we found this property in Everett and we said we're going to buy it. We are saving a down payment on this home and I'll be able to open a studio in the basement. So that way I can still homeschool. Well, the house wasn't selling. Our own home wasn't selling. We were feeling a little bit defeated, a little bit discouraged and someone came to us with a business opportunity to invest and we said if you give us that money we are going to double it within just a couple months and you'll have all this money to put into your new home. Now keep in mind we're in our 20s and we are, we are naive. So we gave all of our money into this business proposition and we lost every cent, every single cent. Um, so we put our, our house then actually got an offer and it sold. The builder was very patient with us and he said, you can pay me as we go. Pay me a little bit as you go. As you have it, you can pay me. And I am the type of person, I don't like to owe people. I want to give you what I owe you. So, my mind, as I, yours is too, you get thinking, you're like, what can I do? What can I do? So one morning, I'm pushing the stroller and I have our two little girls walking beside the baby. And it was this Tuesday morning and we're walking and all of a sudden I'm seeing recycle bin after recycle bin filled, filled, filled with beer cans, beer bottles, wine bottles, alcohol bottles, and my mind went ding. And I went home and we got a garbage bag and we started collecting all the beer bottles and wine bottles and cans and my little two helpers were helping me. And we dragged that bag back home and that night there was one vehicle. So that night my husband, uh, I told him what I did and he's like, oh my goodness, okay. He never shot me down. He's never discouraged me. He was always supportive. So I took the car and I took the beer bottles in and I returned them and we made $40. And I thought if I started earlier, I could get more. I could get a wider range of, of neighborhoods. So the next, week, the next week, I went out at 6 a.m. 
the kids were up early anyway, so we packed them up and I got like three neighborhoods and I returned them that night and we got like $75. This is another thing I wanted to talk to you about. People started hearing what I was doing and they were watching and they were seeing my husband's grandparents hurt. And instead of discouraging me or saying, here's $500, don't do that. They said, we have an old van parked on our property and we were happy to give it to you. No one's using it. And so I had the van, I had the work room. So I was able to put the kids into the big van and we would drive around for a few hours and we were getting like two, three hundred dollars in one, uh, one morning. And what I learned from that, first of all, is that instead of just giving people, instead of just giving your kids, instead of just giving people the answer, give them a tool to enable them to do it on their own because then they will learn and they will be grateful and more appreciative. And number two, <laughs> um, the other thing that came out of that experience was some people were judgmental and some people would look down on you. But then there were others who would pack up the boxes of beer bottles and instead of putting it in the recycling bin, they would bring them out for me and put them in my van. Well, you, you know, Becky, I, I can see the emotion in, in, in telling your story, and, and, and I didn't expect this in my podcast, <laughs> but again, I knew I had the right person to bring into the podcast, because I sensed it, just from your, your, mm -hmm. your videos and, and what you're doing, um, this survival technique that you have, with a little flavor of entrepreneurialism, oh, gosh. you know, you know, in you as yeah. well, right? So. Uh, just really something I, you know, and we're coming to the end of the of the podcast here, and, and um, oh, I did want to ask you about Arnie. Oh my goodness! Like yeah. I saw Arnie. Like I've seen some of his motivational. Oh man, pure God, motivation. Pure, like pure. So obviously, I don't know if it's a conference or what it is, Mr. Olympia, or what yeah. you're attending. But did oh you get a chance to, to speak to him and uh, a little bit and? I would have I would have held on to his hand. I okay. wouldn't let him go. So this is an incredible I'll try to be as quick as I can. But um, so when I started the Babe Cave, I knew there was gonna be a lot of ups and downs, the financial thing and just everything. Within a couple months of, of being in our studio, in our new home, after getting it built, people started complaining on our street and the town came and told us we had to move. They said you either it's a cease and desist. I just got rolling. So anyways, we ended up buying this property and building here. So many hardships, so many frustrating times. And every time we had the choice of either like closing and giving up or picking up and trying again. And the reason I did that was always because Arnold. I read his stories, I read his books, his motivational quotes, his speeches. They were all about dig deeper, fight harder. Don't make an excuse. If you want bad enough, go get it. If you have that vision in your mind, then go get it. So here's the crazy thing, I'm, I'm like super motivated by him. And I become sponsored with Magnum. They're amazing. Um, so for the first year, I remember being at the Magnum booth at the Arnold Classic. And Arnold does his walk around the whole um, expo. And he walked past, I was like, oh my goodness, he's right there. <laughs> I was like, ah. well anyways, a year passes. And Marcus Collius, owner of Magnum, said, I know how much you look up to him, up to Arnold. I have tickets for a luncheon with Arnold that I'm happy to give to you. He said, I won't be able to attend. I have to fly back to BC. You can have them. Oh my goodness, this is going to be incredible. I'm looking forward to this whole thing. Um, so the day comes. We're at the expo. It's a Sunday morning. I've got my tickets and I go over to where I'm supposed to be. And I get there. And it's actually a, um, they interview all of the bodybuilding greats from the 70s. Yeah. So they're all there and Arnold's up there and it was insane. I'm like taking selfies and um, that's what my tickets were actually for. So I had been given the wrong tickets. So I sat there and again, I have my boots on and I'm trying to be quiet, creeping up to the front of the stage, you know, and because all the seating was taken. So I was sitting there quietly listening and then they whisked Arnold off. And I'm supposed to be at that luncheon. 
So, I this is where the crazy the story gets crazy. I'm walking back and forth trying to find where is this lunch and where did Arnold go? I'm supposed to be there. This is my chance, and I can't find it. I'm asking guards. I'm asking anyone who works there. Do you know where the luncheon is? No, 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 no. Every door is closed in my face. So I'm feeling defeated again, and I decide I should just go back to the booth. Forget about it. So I get back on the escalator, and I'm walking through the building, and all of a sudden, my mind goes, what are you doing? You did not come this far to only come this far. Get back up there. So I turned around, go back up the escalator, in my candy jump, looking for any clue, any tip. <laughs> and I see these two men, and they have a map, and they have this big poster, and I went over to them and I said, do you guys happen to know any chance where the luncheon is with Arnold? And they go, yeah, we're going there right now. Come with us. So we go and I'm, I'm running because they're running. We're going to be late. So they're running and in my jumps, we cross through hallways, up escalators, through doors, into the hotel across the street, down an elevator. There it is, the doors. And I can see Arnold. And I'm there, but I don't have the right ticket. So I say to the lady, <laughs> They, the two men go in. She goes, where's your tickets? And I said, I don't have them. They gave me these and they're the wrong tickets and Marcus has gone home already, but I'm supposed to be in there. Okay, let me just check. And she comes back and she says, okay, you can go in. She goes, but hurry, because he's almost done taking photos with, with uh, fans. So I go in and he just finishes as I come in there. I'm like, oh, so close again. So he's now getting his food and you're not supposed to interrupt him while he's eating. Um, so I just, they said, the, the security guards are now on my side. They've seen me the entire time while I'm trying to get to him. And they're like, just get a plate of food, go sit down, you'll get your chance. We promise. I'm like, okay. So I get a plate of food, I'm not hungry at all. I sit down two tables away from Arnold. So the whole entire time I'm like, ah, so pleased. Um, people were laughing at me because they could tell that I was very giddy. Um, and then, he goes up on stage and he's giving these really motivational speeches and it was amazing and listening and uh, a man comes over and he's asking me about my boots and the last thing on my mind right now is, is talking about my boots. You wore your kangaroo boots yes. into the luncheon? Yes, because my mind was not focused <laughs> at all on anything other than getting in there. So I'm in my sports bra, my leggings and my boots. So now I'm at the luncheon and uh, this man comes up and he's like, hey, can I talk to you about your boots? Can I interview you about your boots? And I'm like, okay, fine, soon, but I'm here, to, I want to meet Arnold. And he goes, well, I really want to talk to you. Can I interview you? And so I'm just like, oh, like this, you know? And so he said, after Arnold's speaking, I'm going to come interview you. So he comes up to me after, taps me on the shoulder. Arnold is coming off the stage. They're about to whisk him away again. And I'm like, oh my God. This man taps me on the shoulder and he goes, can I interview you now? And I said, I am here to meet Arnold Schwarzenegger. And he grabs me and goes, let's go meet him. And he took me right up to Arnold and he goes, Arnold, this is Becky Overbeck. And Arnold, he takes his hands and he puts them on my waist, my bare tummy. And he goes, what's your name? And I told him and he goes, your abs are amazing. So in the meantime, the guy who brought me over has my phone and he's videoing it. So I'm like, oh my gosh, so Arnold's talking and he's like, I'm so invested. Have him one -on -one. Yeah, um, it's just him and I, we're talking and he's holding my tummy and we get a picture and blah, blah, blah. After we're done, I get my phone back from the gentleman, Bert Martinez, who, <laughs> in, in, uh, he, in, what's the word? He helps me meet Arnold. He hands me my phone back. He forgot to press record. Oh, no. So he didn't get any video. No. No, no. Well, anyway, Bert, I still love you. Um, but long story short, that was an amazing moment and another experience of like, if you don't give up, if you just keep trying, just keep trying. And I have my picture up there with Arnold as a constant yeah, reminder I've seen that of that. Yeah, you're posting. That's just awesome. So where it gets even better is that this Arnold Classic, we uh, had just been told that the Arnold was canceled. Yeah. Wait for this story. Arnold's been canceled. None of the Magnum people are going, None of, nobody's going. But I knew Arnold was still going and we had purchased tickets to be at this after school all-star event where the money goes to charity. 
So my husband and I said, well, let's still go. You know, let's still go. Why not? Get a hotel. We'll see what's there. We get there and the owner of Magnum and the owner of Status Fitness Magazine, who we've shot with before, they said, we have a favor that we need you to do for us. And I'm like, okay, what is it? We need you to present awards on stage with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh no, oh my goodness, wow. They're like, do you have a dress? I'm like, um, yeah. So here I am on stage now. Arnold is there, I am here, and I've got these award, like these massive, beautiful Arnold statues and awards to hand out to the bodybuilders who wow. competed. I, and every time I walk out, they're like, Becky Overbeck from Magnum Nutraceuticals. And I thought it was so cool. I know, I thought it would be one time. I thought I would go out one yeah. time. Yeah. So the second night, the same thing, they said, we need you up there again. And there's Arnold and there's me and insane. We go to the All Stars after school event. We're sitting at the same table now. Wow. I have pictures of Arnold and I like a foot apart from each other at the same table. If you don't believe that dreams come true and that what you envision in your mind can become a reality, oh my goodness, I will never doubt it for a moment in my life that what you focus on becomes a reality. I went from looking up and idolizing Arnold to sitting at the same table with him. What a story. That's so incredible. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Wow, these stories get better and better, Becky. I was hanging out, and these stories are getting better and better. Um, by the way, this is, the, I've always had an intention to video uh, the portion of my podcast. Mm -hmm. This is Becky's idea. Yeah. I come, in, I come into the bait cave, and she goes, we're videoing. Mm -hmm. I said, what? what? So thank you, Becky, for this idea. Because it's the first. It's and I hope that um, TNT Weekly can get into that video format more often because I think it just adds an element to, to the You don't interview. hope it will be yeah. See, that's what I love about this girl. It will um, be young. It's been a great, I had so much fun back here, getting to know you a, 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 a little bit more, a lot more, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I'm so happy that you gave me your time today. You're such an inspiration. TNT Weekly, New Tech, Wake Up. What we have this talent and you know Becky Overbeck right here at New Tech. I mean she should be in downtown Toronto, New York with this type of passion and vision that she has. And we have it right here in her in her own backyard. So, you know, I'm gonna leave the last words to you, Becky, but for me, I'll tell everybody out there, you can be Whoever you want to be at any point of time in your life, it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter if you think you've lost it and you're overweight, you can make a change any time, any minute of, of, of your life. And, and I, listen, I, I turned 60 in March. If I can do it, you can do it. If you're 60, 55, and you think that you fell off the cart and there's no use getting back, let me tell you, please do it. Mm -hmm. And Becky here is an inspiration for that model in the way she's dealt with her challenges in her life and brought herself to this plateau of physical fitness right here in her backyard. So, Becky, last words. Well, thank you, first of all, for having me. Thank you for inviting me. This is probably one of my first podcasts as well. And you're doing an amazing job. Oh, thanks, Becky. So Have keep, a fun. Yeah, so keep uh, promoting health and fitness and all things positive. And yes, just as Antonio said, anyone from anywhere can do anything. It's up to you to set a goal, to believe in yourself, to put in the action, and then achieve it. And this is my goal book that I've had for years. And it says it, dream it, believe it, and achieve it. Because you can, you can achieve anything you want. Anything. Over and out, man. <laughs> Pretend. Pretend. You know what I wanted to do? I want to do that on thing. Hi, my name's Antonio. Your name is Becky. And we want to fuck your house. Want to give it a run? Sure. Hello, I'm Antonio. And I am Becky. And we want to pump you up. up. <laughs>